158, a resolution of inquiry requesting the President and directing the Secretary of State to transmit pursuant to House rules. I request that members have the opportunity to submit views for a committee report that may be produced on today's measure. Without objection, so ordered. The chair announces today that any request for recorded votes may be rolled and he may recess the committee at any point without objection, so ordered. <clears throat> Pursuant to notice, I now call up HRS 158, a resolution of inquiry requesting the President and directing the Secretary of State to transmit, respectively, certain documents to the House of Representatives relating to congressionally appropriated funds to the nation of Ukraine from January 20th, 2021 to February 24th, 2023. The measure was circulated in advance. The clerk shall designate the res resolution. <clears throat> HRS 158, of inquiry requesting the President and directing the Secretary of Without objection, first reading is dispensed with. The resolution is considered read and open to amendment. At any point, I now recognize myself for an opening statement. <clears throat> one year, one month ago today, Putin launched his full-scale, unprovoked war of aggression in Ukraine. To date, at least 8,000 civilians have been killed. 65,000 war crimes have been reported including the abduction of 14,000 Ukrainian children. These numbers do not include the staggering loss of life on the battlefield. In response, Congress has provided a significant amount of assistance to Ukraine to ensure Putin's aggression is stopped at Ukraine's border and to ensure NATO countries are not next. I have supported this assistance because a victory by Putin in Ukraine would further embolden America's adversaries from Chairman Xi in Beijing to the Ayatollah in Tehran to Kim Jong-un in, in uh, North Korea. As the chairman of this committee, it's also my constitutionally guaranteed responsibility to pursue stringent oversight of the Department of State and U.S. aid. Every dollar counts, and the Biden administration should expect this committee to be vigilant in demanding transparency and accountability for U.S. assistance to Ukraine. In fact, this committee is already in the process of conducting vigorous oversight of the assistance, by provi um, the assistance provided to Ukraine by the Department of State. Our first committee event of this Congress was a classified briefing on oversight of assistance to Ukraine. Also, I led a congressional uh, delegation to Kyiv last month to get a firsthand perspective of the safeguards and monitoring mechanisms in place for U.S. support. <clears throat> Next week, I'm holding a public hearing with the inspectors general from DOD, state, and USAID to assess the administration's oversight efforts to date. This will be the first time any of them have appeared before this committee since the full-scale invasion. But I can assure you, it will not be our last engagement with them on this issue. It is unfortunate that some misunderstand strong oversight is somehow at odds with strong U.S. support for Ukraine's self-defense against Putin's brutal illegal invasion. This oversight is vital for continued U.S. support and for ensuring such support is effective in protecting American security interests abroad. This resolution of inquiry requests the administration to transmit relevant documents related to congressionally appropriated funds for Ukraine. It is important Congress continues to closely examine <clears throat> the Biden administration's failure of deterrence leading up to Russia's February 24th, 2022 invasion. This will ensure that in the future, such brutal wars of aggression can be deterred by American strength and not <clears throat> encouraged by American weakness. The American taxpayer deserves to know how this money is being spent, and I'm committed to exercising intense congressional oversight on all of our assistance to Ukraine. So I support this resolution as it is consistent with my oversight agenda of U.S. assistance to Ukraine. Is there any discussion on the resolution? The ranking member, Mr. Meeks, is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I oppose resolution HRES 158 as we consider this measure today. I got to tell you, I can't help but feel frustrated that here we are again. We considered this exact same measure 
in the last Congress. It was, at that time, divisive and ill-advised, and it remains so today. And so my message will remain as it was in the 117th Congress. From day one of Russia's invasion of Ukraine in 2022, and long before, this committee and the entire Congress has remained resolutely bipartisan in our support for Ukraine as it fights against Russian aggression. This bipartisanship has been pivotal to Ukraine's success and its survival. But measures like this one put the bipartisanship in jeopardy and sends absolutely the wrong message. As we consider this resolution for the second time, my Republican colleagues will try to gloss over what this really means. They will claim that this measure is just about oversight. It is not. They may claim that it says nothing negative about the future of our support for Ukraine. <clears throat> but sadly, it does. Despite what my GOP colleagues may claim today, this resolution is not about transparency or strengthening accounting of our support for Ukraine, which we all agree is important. This resolution is about division. Reporting it out favorably is not responsible oversight and, in fact, ignores the unprecedented amount of oversight this very committee is conducting on a regular basis. This includes the dozens of hours of briefings and extensive documentation the administration is providing to us all. This political measure is unnecessarily divisive and plays directly into Vladimir Putin's hands, and we should reject it loudly and in a bipartisan manner. Acknowledging the unprecedented nature of the aid we are providing, the administration is fulfilling its duty to spend every U.S. taxpayer dollar in a transparent and accountable way to keep Congress informed at each and every step. Since February of 2022, the administration has engaged with members and staff on no less than 60, that's six zero, occasions. Our diplomats working in a war zone in Kyiv have gone to painstakingly lengths to track, to monitor, and evaluate U.S. assistance, including by implementing the administration's October 2022 strategy to account for all U.S. security <clears throat> assistance and to bolster the capabilities of Ukraine and our allies and partners in the region to counter illicit diversion. Furthermore, the administration has provided extensive information to the Committee on the Security Assistance and weapons provided to Ukraine, and methods by which such equipment is tracked and accounted for on a regular basis. And I'm sure the chairman, as when I visited Kyiv and President Zelensky in, last, uh, in the 117th Congress, found that President Zelensky wants to make sure that there's accountability of every weapon and every dollar and he kind of says that consistently. And that's why he is pleasant. He it approves and thanks us at every opportunity for that assistance because he does not want anything uh, that missing and unaccounted for. Meanwhile, also, the administration is cooperating fully and openly with a task force of three inspector generals from state, DOD, USAID, whose work can amplify and evaluate these efforts. At every turn, the departments, agencies, and OIGs have kept this committee and the, this Congress more broadly and appropriately briefed and informed. This was true in the 117th Congress, and it remains true in the 118th Congress. So I ask my colleagues, what message does supporting this measure, knowing the extreme rhetoric the sponsors have used to discuss American assistance to Ukraine, send to the Ukrainian people and to Vladimir Putin? 
Support for this resolution ignores the painstaking efforts of the American and Ukrainian governments and instead parrots the propaganda of the Kremlin. <clears throat> so I want to be clear on one thing, though. I support robust oversight of our assistance to Ukraine, and I look forward to continuing to work with the administration and my colleagues on the other side of the aisle and the chairman to keep the safeguards on our assistance strong. Going forward, I urge my Republican colleagues, now with the majority, to embrace responsible oversight <coughs> and reject partisan politics. Let's send out one message, that we on this Committee on Foreign Affairs support Ukraine and will take meaningful steps to ensure our assistance is used properly, effectively, and remain committed to giving them the resources they need to win and to thrive when this war is over. So with that, I oppose this measure uh, and just say let's stop the political stunts that we and let's move forward in a bipartisan way in support mm -hmm. of Ukraine against Vladimir Putin. And I yield back. Joe Neils, any further discussion on the resolution? There being no further discussion of the resolution, the committee will move to consideration of amendments. Does any member wish to offer an amendment? There being no amendments, I move that the committee report House Resolution 158 to the House with a favorable recommendation. All those in favor, say aye. Aye. All those opposed, signify by saying no. No. In the opinion of the chair, even though the ranking member was very loud, <laughs> I would say that the ayes have it and the motion is agreed to. Yeah. On that, I hope we had the. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, on that, I ask for a recorded vote. Roll call vote has been requested pursuant to the chair's previous announcement. This vote will be postponed. This poll spot, we're going to recess for five to ten minutes. Why? Let members know that we're in because we don't want to. Uh, okay. <laughs> the committee will recess. Mr. The uh, Mr. Cicilline is recognized. Mr. Chairman, I ask unanimous consent that my very eloquent statement be introduced into the record. And, uh, yeah. Mr. Perry, do you? Pursuant to our agreement. Mr. Perry, do you object? Pursuant to our <laughs> agreement. <laughs> Without objection, so ordered. Committee will recess for about 10 minutes. Clerk will send out notice of when we will reconvene. Nine.
So my
You got a picture? Oh, God. Are, are you ready to start? You ready? All right. Committee will come to order. Committee postponed further proceedings on reporting House Resolution 158 favorably to the House, on which the ayes prevail by voice vote. Question now occurs on reporting the measure favorably. The clerk will call the roll. And we want to thank our financial services members for finally showing up. <laughs> clerk. Clerk will call the roll. Mr. Chairman, uh, a point, uh, point of uh, information. It, it is a difficult saving the economy and saving the world. So uh, we're, 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 we're working on it working on both committees. Heart. We're Mr. working Chairman, on it. We want committees. to thank the Sergeant at Arms for making the door big enough to get their fat heads through that thing. <laughs> and that's for the record. All right. Birch it, all right. With, birch it with two T's to all my friends. The gentleman the will uh, dismiss. Clerk will call the roll. Representative Smith? Yes. Representative Smith votes aye. Representative Wilson? Aye. Wilson votes aye. Representative Perry? Aye. Perry votes aye. Representative Isa? Aye. Isa votes aye. Representative Wagner? Aye. Wagner votes aye. Representative Mast? Aye. Mast votes aye. Representative Buck? Buck? <laughs> Representative Burchett? See. Burchett votes aye. Representative Green? Aye. Green votes aye. Representative Barr? Aye. Barr votes aye. Representative Ronnie Jackson? Aye. Jackson votes aye. Representative Young Kim? Aye. Kim votes aye. Representative Salazar? Aye. C. Salazar votes aye. Representative Heisenga? Aye. Heisenga votes aye. Representative Rodowagon? Aye. Rodowagon votes aye. Representative Hill? Aye. Representative Hill votes aye. Representative Davidson? Aye. Davidson votes aye. Representative Bayard? Aye. Bayard votes aye. Representative Waltz? Aye. Representative Waltz votes aye. Representative Keene? Aye. Kane votes aye. Representative Wal uh, Lawler? Aye. Lawler votes aye. Representative Mills? Aye. Mills votes aye. Representative McCormick? Aye. McCormick votes aye. Representative Moran? Aye. Moran votes aye. Representative James? Aye. James votes aye. Representative Self? Aye. Self votes aye. Representative uh, Ranking Member Meeks? No. Meeks votes nay. Representative Sherman? Sherman? Representative Connolly? Nay. Connolly votes nay. Uh, Representative uh, Keating? Nay. Keating votes no. Representative Cicilline? No. Cicilline votes no. Representative Barra? No. Barra votes no. Representative Castro? Castro? Representative Titus? No. Titus votes no. Representative Blue? No. Blue votes no. Representative Wild? No. Wild votes no. Representative Phillips? No. Phillips votes no. Representative Allred? No. Allred votes no. Representative Andy Kim? Andy Kim votes no. Representative Jacobs? No. Jacobs votes no. Representative Manning? No. Manning votes no. Representative Sherfalis McCormick? No. Sherfalis McCormick votes no. Representative Stanton? No. Stanton votes no. Representative Dean? No. Dean votes no. Representative Moskowitz? Moskowitz? Representative Jonathan Jackson? No. Jackson votes no. Representative Kamlager Dove? No. Kamlager Dove votes no. Representative Costa? Costa? Representative Crow? No. Crow votes no. Representative Schneider? No. Schneider votes no. Mr. Chairman? Aye. Mr. Chairman votes aye. Have all members have voted? <clears throat> Does any member wish to record or change his vote? The clerk will report the tally. Mr. Chairman, on this vote, the ayes are 26 and the, na the noes are 19. The ayes have it. The motion is agreed to. Sorry, the noes are 20. Still, the ayes have it and the motion is agreed to. This concludes consideration of the measure noticed by the, com the committee uh, for today. There being no further business to transact, the committee now stands adjourned. <laughs>